Are you ready? Step back. Ready? Fast or slow? Slow. Oh, you're a slow guy. Okay. <laughs> Damn, that's so hard. What is that, bro? <laughs> Car people are an interesting bunch. Their priorities in an automobile aren't really to get from one place to another in a timely manner or save money or anything like that. What they're really interested in is looking good and going fast. And wheels help with both of those. You can completely change how your car looks. And that could either be for the better or for the worse. And if you get a bad set of wheels, that's a bigger failure than a badly written superhero movie. Because there are a lot of really nice looking sets of wheels out there that you could buy for your car. And this video will have a similar format to my last video. Where I talked about stock wheels and put them into a tier list. And I'll be doing the same cars and putting those on a tier list to really see whether it's worth investing in a set of fancy wheels. Or if you're better off investing in one of Logan Paul's business ventures. First car on the second tier list is, of course, the 370Z. And I've chosen two different options for the 370Z to kind of display the breadth of options that people have when modifying their Nissan. And to start this off, I will go with this 370Z, which actually looks quite good on a set of Workmeisters. And, you know, me picking this is, of course, my inner JDM fanboy really shining through. But also, it's a really great looking wheel, and I don't think the 370Z looks wonderful. It's a little funky looking, but on this wheel, it looks exquisite. And next up, of course, is the Replica T37. And while this profile of wheel always looks pretty good on just about anything, I mean, it, it, the rep wheels, and I don't want to be too much of a snob, but it's almost so cliched that, like, since they're, like, trashy quality most of the time, I'd put them in trash, but they look good, so I'll split the difference and put them in decent. And while you meme lords in the comments may be slightly disappointed about that, I don't know. They're alright. Next up is the 911 GT3, which in the last video I said had solid wheels, and it would be pretty hard to beat that, but I think these HREs do a good job, and while they're maybe not quite exquisite, I would for sure say they're worth the upgrade. This one is possibly the second biggest stereotype on this list. Of course, the biggest being Nissan 370Zs on rep wheels, and while Miatas are also stereotypically on rep wheels, if you're gonna build a nice Miata, it's gonna be on Enki RPF1s. Like, that's the wheel for Miatas, and there's a reason for it. I also think this is exquisite taste. So the next one's a little tricky, because I couldn't find this particular car, which is the Roof CTR1, I think, on aftermarket wheels. It was just the ones that they came on for the factory, but there are a few people that have body kits on just regular 911s that look pretty similar to the Roof, and those have modified wheels, and this one is, I think, Jason from Rotaforms on a set of those new Kinesis wheels, and I think it's exquisite taste. I like everything that Rotaform does, pretty much, and this is just, it fits the car really well. All right, next up is the American Muscle Truck, the classic American Muscle Truck. And it has the classic redneck racing wheels. And I honestly think these fit the look of the truck way better than anything that came on from the factory. But really the thing is, whenever I see these wheels, I think of dudes with a really bad mohawk, a goofy looking goatee, wraparound sunglasses, a wife beater, and they're smoking a pack of cigarettes on the hood of their fox body. And just for that reason alone, I have to say they're worth the upgrade, but not quite exquisite. Like, I would for sure purchase these, but if I did, like, as soon as I bolt them onto my car, like, I'll suddenly turn into Uncle Clayton or something. Next up is the Mercedes 300E, and now, before everyone gets all riled up and says, Ah, but Mr. Real Fast, those are the wheels from the BMW 3 Series. Yeah, I know. But BBS RSs look good on everything, so this is exquisite. And a little, you know, seventh inning stretch of sorts. Before people get all accusatory in the comments and say, Ah, oh, you're just cherry-picking the best wheels. Yeah, you're right, I am. But also, most of these are kind of the common wheels that you would see on these cars. Like, if you're going to find a modified Mazda, as we've already stated, it's going to be on Enkis. So, yeah, I'm looking for the good ones, so it's a little skewed in that sense, but for the most part, I'm just finding what's most common on most of these cars. Alright, so I think the next one is an Alfa Romeo, and there aren't a lot of these out there, but when I was picking out this wheel, I thought it looked pretty good, so I'll say decent. 
I think they're HREs. Next up is the Audi S4, and this is the one that Rotofor made the replica of its wheels, so of course I couldn't find a single S4 with the Rotoform replica wheels. But this is on a different set of Rotoforms, and I think it looks pretty good. So again, I'll say worth the upgrade. All right, so this car is a little confusing because in my last video, I said the EB110 had some of the best wheels you can find on a car from the factory, and I stand by that. But this one has some of my favorite aftermarket wheels of all time. And I just don't think they really do it for me. I mean, just the way the car styled, I think that those like almost turbo fan looking wheels, and I know that's not the correct term for them, but those original wheels just look so much better to me. And that's why I'm going to have to say, as far as these BBSs go, stock is unfortunately better. All right, so you know how I was saying those Bugatti EB110 wheels looked amazing? Well, here they are on a 3 Series, and they for sure look better than stock wheels. Like, BBS RS is on a 3 Series, you know, on an M3. Like, that's the clear because one they came on them from the factory but also they just look amazing but I think that the EB110 wheels fit this car so much better and maybe that's just me being one of those weird stance types but I mean fight me here we have the Audi S5 and this is on a set of rotiforms and I think it looks good these wheels and this kind of profile of wheel looks good on most sporty new cars factory I think five spoke wheels on this car just look right and I think if you did like a beefier tire and stuff, you could look just as good as these rotiforms, if not better. So that's why I'll say decent because they look good, but I think you could achieve the same result with the stock wheels. All right, so this particular GTR is the one that came with the LM GT4s from the factory. And most people keep the LM GT4s because they're a really good looking wheel. And if you put a bigger tire on them, they look great. And they're so expensive and it's still a crazy money. flex. But some people did do T37s and I think it looks better. Just my personal opinion. I mean, I guess it depends on the color. Like a white car, I think would look better with black LM GT4s. But if you're doing midnight purple, it's got to be bronze TEs. So I'll say for sure it's exquisite taste. All right, next up is kind of the same deal as the EB, and it's the M1 Pro car, and this is a legendary car, and I think it's got like some magnesium BBS RSs, but I think they're decent. I think they fit the car a little better than the BBSs on the EB110, even though those still look great, but I prefer the regular street car wheels over those. All right, next up is the Mark V Golf, and I think they look really good when they're aired out on some rotiforms, and I'll say these are worth the upgrade for sure, especially compared to those Google goofy looking stock ones. All right, this next car is the Ferrari F40, and it's like one of the most legendary cars of all time. So you don't really see a whole lot of modified ones, but when you do, it's crazy. Like they all are just so on point. And I mean, that it is easily exquisite taste. Like these BBSs just fit the car so perfectly. Next up is the Shelby GT500. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's trash, but the stock wheels are for sure better. So next up is this Nissan R33 GTR. And again, it's really hard to find a 400R that doesn't have LM GT2s because the 400R is almost a million dollar car, or in some cases is a one million dollar car. And this I found is Tommy Effia's clone. So it's got all the 400R body parts, but doesn't have the stickers. And again, it's on some Volk Racing T37s. Like that's the stereotypical wheel, especially for GTRs. And again, it looks great. So it's for sure an exquisite taste. All right, so this next one's a little interesting because this is a stock Corvette wheel, I believe. And it's on Adam LZ's C4 Corvette. And I couldn't really find a C4 Corvette on aftermarket wheels that wasn't like drag wheels. And these are like three piece converted and they look way better than stock to be honest like i think they add a pretty cool flavor to the car but i mean it's not really anything to write home about i think it maybe look better on some of those rotiforms that look like the m1 wheels but that's really just my personal opinion this m5 is a car that surprised me because i thought it would be really really easy to find an 80s bmw on aftermarket wheels but i like comb through just various pictures for a while before I found one that would like be suitable and I don't even remember the wheel brand but they, I mean they're like the generic kind of performance looking wheels and they look good on here but I I could for sure say stocks better so if you watched my last video you would know that I said some very cool <laughs> things about the Tesla Model 3 and especially its wheels and some would argue that that was unwarranted, but I think that was completely warranted. And in this video, of course, we're talking about how aftermarket wheels improve upon the stock wheels or don't improve upon the stock wheels. And I think that in this case, these rotiformers don't maybe necessarily fit the car the best, 
But I will say that they are miles ahead of anything that the Model 3 came on from the factory. So that's why I'll have to give it a decent. Just simply for the fact that it doesn't look like an anchovy pizza. And this next one, I was already on this list, so I don't quite know why I had another one. But this is, again, the Mark V GTI. And I'll say, it, look, I, I think these are worth the upgrade because they fit the car really good. It's kind of the like same style, I think, with what the factory was going for. But it's a little bit more of like a hot boy stance car sort of style. But I think it works for this particular GTI. And then this last one is the E36 M3. And it's on some BBSs. And these are the same wheels that were on that LaFerrari, the same wheels that were on that EB110. And I mean, maybe I'm a little biased, but they're exquisite taste for sure. And that concludes our tier list for modified wheels. And I think an important takeaway from this video is that it really does come down to personal preference. And all of this was mostly stuff that I personally preferred. Like, I didn't go out of my way to find wheels that I didn't like. I and mean, that's why there were a lot in decent and above and not a whole lot in trash. But I also still think that there's something to be said for driving around on your stock wheels. Like, one, you don't really have to worry about, like, curbing it and going into the debt because you just curbed a $10,000 set of limited edition BBS. Like, you can just drive around on the stock ones and if you bend a wheel or, like, someone steals your wheels, you could just go to the dealership and get a new set for one or $2,000 as opposed to $5,000 for a set of new TEs. And I don't know, I, you can still do customization with stock wheels, but if you really want to stand out and like express yourself through your car, a different set of wheels is pretty much the easiest like gateway drug into doing that.